A group of sociopaths from my school that always tormented us followed me and my friends to my house one day in a pickup truck. They stole my friend's shoes, pushed one of them until she fell, and took my sketch pad and threw it in a puddle. My stepbrother came outside, beat one of them badly, stole his pants, and threw his keys into a sewer grate before hitting him with an empty vodka bottle. It was traumatizing for me on both ends, but that group of kids never even looked at us again. He f around and found out, I guess. She told me my face made her want to off herself, so I told the school counselor that she confided to me that she wants to off herself. She had to explain to everyone what she really said. Challenged him to a fight at lunch. Left during the period before lunch to move 800 miles away. Weirdly, became friendly with his dad, who ripped him in front of me. Mad one. He was a typical bully, really, picking out a new target at the start of every day and stalking them, seeing how far he could take it before ripping on you for being a bitch that couldn't be teased. His favorite was to try and take you down with a liver punch or a dead leg when you weren't paying attention. The smaller guys got it worse than anybody. Like most bullies, he used to wear people down. Everyone hated him. He was tolerated but never liked. Let's call him B. Fast forward a few years, I'm 15 and starting to get into fitness. There were a few gyms in my area, but the only one I could afford was the No Frills and Broken Windows Bodybuilders Gym that sat on a large industrial estate. It was renowned for being a place where you could get seriously hurt if you started to mouth off, but we just wanted to learn how to train. So one day, me and my friend walked in there like scared puppies and asked to sign up. The owner, Mark, took us around and introduced us to everyone, and from that moment, we were treated like royalty. They loved the fact that we were taking an interest. If we were unsure of an exercise, they would stand with us and they would take us through it, step by step, spotting us as they worked through the anatomy of the muscles. Soon, we knew everyone. Tekken, the guy, so big, he looked... 3D. Paulo, the dude that used to train his legs every day and had to wear chef's pants. Bree, the fellow that used to eat a Costco chicken for breakfast and one for tea. Such a mix of characters. Maybe six months in, my mate goes on holiday and I decide to go and do a late workout one evening. I walk into the gym and B is sitting there behind the reception desk. He was surprisingly cool with asking me how long I'd been training and what I was planning to do that evening. After a chat, I walked into the gym and kept my head down and began my workout. I was a few sets in when I noticed him staring at me. I knew he was going to do something because he just couldn't help himself. It started with pushing down at the barbell when I asked for a spot, and then he thought it'd be a good idea to pull on the cables when I was doing cable crossovers. Finished my workout and accepted his invitation to go into the sauna as he had just set it up. He waited until I was there with him, and then he locked the door and peed on the coals. The stench was was horrific. It was a brand new machine and he royally destroyed it. I heard a noise outside the sauna shed as Bree unlocked the door and pulled it open, trying to find out what was going on. He peered in before screaming at B. Oh, shut up, no, you fucking idiot. Looks at me. Why'd you get in there with this fucking fool? Come on out, mate. Look at B. I'm guessing from the smell you on the coals, you dirty little twit. I'll tell you what, sitting here for 10 minutes and think about it. Slams the door. Bree walks me to the reception and throws me a bottle of water. Sorry about that, lad. I'm looking after the gym for a few weeks and I brought out B to work here for the evenings while I train. B is your son? I stared. Starts laughing. Yeah, he's a prick, isn't he? I hope that he doesn't make my car stink of B on the way home. Vomited all over him. After that, he never messed with me again. Made friends on the football team. Bullies think twice when you're buddies with the 6 foot 2, 250 pound Samoan. Crazy how nice so many Samoans are. I kicked him hard in the balls in the middle of history class in sophomore year. He had all the guys in our grade moo at me in the hallway when we changed classes. I put up with it for a week until I snapped and started beating the sh out of him with my history book. Got him up against the wall and kicked him as hard as I could. Legit doesn't remember kicking him, but I remember my foot was sweaty, which snapped me out of it. The teacher made us both go to the hallway and explain exactly what happened, so I told him everything. Surprisingly, I'd never got in trouble. The next year, I had to sit behind him in homeroom, and one day, he just randomly turned around and apologized. I apologized for kicking him, and he said he totally deserved it. Senior year, I made everybody in the class Christmas ornaments with all our names on them, and he got all teared up when he got his. So, not a bad ending. Well, I hit her with the brick, so that taught her the lesson to not f*** with me. I do think I went too far. I grew up in a rough area. Fortunately, I was attending the same school as my older brothers who would look out for me. For a while, I was targeted and picked on by a particular individual, and his entourage would cackle like hyenas every time he pulled my tie, kicked my shin, or shoved me. I had no idea who these bullies were, but I was a geeky kid, so I can only assume that they'd just see me as an easy target. So after relentless bump-ins with this guy, he took things too far, and he shoved me down a long flight of stairs at the school. I was only a little hurt, but I was pretty shaken up. 
And I, as I heard the echoes of his friends laughing and walking down the hallway, I had immediately went to find my brother and asked him if he could beat up my bully. My brother walked around the school with me trying to find where this guy is and where we'd hang out at lunch. And once we found him, my brother said to me, you go and beat him up. I was pretty taken aback because I thought he'd agree to fight him for me. Again, I was a geeky kid, so I started to back out. My brother said, fine, let him bully you. Suddenly, I was back in, but I didn't know how to fight. He said, I got your back, don't worry. My brother was, yeah, he tried to reassure me. So I walk up to the guy and I just start hitting him and I hit him a lot. The next thing I know, he's on all fours and the adrenaline is running through me. I expected his group to retaliate and beat the shit out of me. They're just shocked, completely stunned. So the adrenaline is pumping and I just, all I can think to blurt out is kiss my shoe. Now, in my head, I'm thinking that this is all some movie level stuff. All eyes on me moment and I'm killing it. My bully looks up from the floor and says, what? I reply, kiss my f-ing shoe. Again, thinking I'm a gangster and he does. He kisses my shoe and I beeline it towards my brother. As we're walking away, my brother was incredibly proud of me for sticking up for myself, but leans in and says, You really gotta work on your shit talk, though. Why the f*** did you make him kiss your shoe? Besides the incredible cringe, they never bothered me again. Although, I did get sh- from other bullies. Middle school. The bully challenged me to a fight after school. I told him to meet me on the soccer field, which happened to be visible from where my bus would park. I made sure to get out of the school as quickly as possible and sat on the bus so I could clearly see the field. As I expected, he never showed up. The next day, I announced loudly so several classmates could hear, Jason, you never showed up for our fight. I waited there after school and you never showed up. You are a f***ing chicken. And that was the end of the bullying. Holy sh! that was big brain. Knew he would wimp out and had a backup in case he showed up. Well played. A bully was harassing my daughter on the bus. Instead of calling his folks or jumping on him, I did this. Put him aside at the bus stop one day and asked for his help. Hey, Danny, I was hoping you could help me out. I guess there is a kid on the bus who's picking on my daughter. She's a girl and small, and I'd like for you to help protect her. If you see anything like that, could you stick up for her, please, and let me know about it? That was the end of the bullying. Psychological warfare. Like your style. I played the crazy card. My cousin started dating his... Well, Ed, the bully's sister, and I guess he didn't like that, so he came after me. It escalated more and more to the point where he nearly threw down in the middle of class one day, but the teacher stopped us. So, she made me stay after class and talk me down, saying she knew he instigated it and I wasn't the problem, but she couldn't have this exploding in her class again, which I felt was fair for her. A couple of days later, as I'm getting stuff from my locker, he was standing behind me. When I turned around, he slapped the books out of my hand. He said, let's go! I rolled my eyes at him, held up a finger, and said, just a second. I then turned around and started hitting my head against my locker. The great thing about an empty steel locker is that you don't have to hit it very hard for it to make a big sound. So while I was not really hitting it that hard, to him, it looked and sounded like I was just wailing on it. After a few of those, I spun around and screamed at him to come at me. His eyes went wide and he just backed up slowly in front of everyone in the hallway. (laughs) He never messed with me again. I pulled a piece of hair out of her head and smacked her face against the ground. Later on, I heard she liked me, which is why she messed with me for two years before I'd had enough. I knew a girl that I liked in middle school. She made my bus rides to school and back miserable. Constantly abused me physically the whole school year. Stole my sweater to wear it herself. On the last day of school, her friend handed me my sweater and a note that explained that she had a huge crush on me, asking me out, etc. On my walk home, I crumpled that shit up and threw it as far as I could. Some girls have f***ed up ways of showing affection. Lol. Hid behind a corner and punched him in the stomach. He eventually became my best friend too, so go figure. Honestly, sometimes the kids who bully just need a reality check. Somebody to talk to. Not not excusing bullying, but a lot of the time it comes from problems at home, and school is the only outlet they, that they have for their frustration and their anger. I'm not saying that that's what happened with your friend, but I wouldn't be surprised if others have similar stories. He tried to shove me down an embankment while on a field trip. Had I fallen, I would have broken my leg or worse, because the embankment ended up being about 25 feet down, then dropped off into some deep bush trees. Anyways, my best friend was next to me and said, watch it, as he came at me so I sidestepped him, and then he tumbled down the embankment, and over the edge and into the brush, fractured several ribs, dislocated the shoulder, and broke his ankle. He never did anything to me again. Fuck you, Darren. Not a bully, per se, but a dick. In my French class, a guy who sat behind me would always kick my chair repeatedly, and I was at the point where I was visibly infuriated by this happening every lesson. The girl who sat next to me turned to him and said, Hey, you should probably stop doing that. He looks like he's about to hit you. Guy laughed it off and said I wouldn't. I didn't. But I turned around and cocked my arm back. He was leaning on the hind legs of his chair with his feet on mine. So when I did this, he flinched. He fell backwards off his chair and it all got a few laughs from the people behind us. Never kicked my chair after that. A teacher nearly stabbed the eye of a student by slamming his face in the desk while he was playing with his triangle ruler. I guess the teacher wanted to show him a magic trick.
Hocus pocus, your eye is now out of focus? Some kid in middle school threatened to bring his dad's gun to school and shoot another kid. who's was taken to the principal's office and the principal took out his own gun, pointed it right at the kid's head, and asked him if he still felt like a tough guy. From what people said, it was a fake airsoft gun the teacher had confiscated from another student and they thought it would scare him straight or something. He told his parents. Parents filed a lawsuit and he resigned shortly after. I don't know what happened after that. Was it wrong? Probably. Did it get the point across? Probably. A teacher lost control of a class that just wouldn't settle down. I don't know to what extent, but it resulted in them storming out to get the pretty feared principal to intervene. Unfortunately, before he arrived to the principal's office, he collapsed in the staff corridor of a heart attack. He didn't survive. His son was in the same year as the class in question, just not in the same room. I can't imagine what he thought about his peers for the next two years in school. Nobody was volunteering for the open day. We'd have to show prospective students and their parents around, so every student from 15 and up got volunteer duty on Saturday instead of detention. Everyone hated that, so a few of the guys went to a fishing supply store, got a few pounds of live maggots, and hid them throughout the school, just in time to cause a massive fly infestation during the open day. They hid some of the maggots alongside fish waste, the smell of which took weeks to properly air out of the building. There was also this time when they tried to smuggle a few seagulls from the beach into school. They actually managed to catch five, but only could set one loose without it flying away immediately. It wasn't a scandal, but in grade 11, a classmate of mine passed in a motorcycle accident when he got sideswiped by a truck. He wasn't popular, and he had almost no friends. The morning after, we were quietly told that a student had passed away, and everybody just went about their day. Several weeks later, a very popular student, Chad, yes, that's his actual name, was at a party. He got drunk and he went driving. He wound up in a hospital in critical condition after very nearly killing a family. Of course, because it was Chad, it was a day of mourning at school. Teachers were getting in on it. F those people. As a gift to teachers, the kid made pop brownies about a week before graduation. The kid was the most innocent kid on the planet, too, and all the teachers loved him, and they obviously trusted him quite a bit. There have been past incidents in my school of students spiking teachers' coffee and food and stuff like that, so they were always on edge. But with this kid, they trusted him 100%. So he put a plate in the staff lounge and... Let's just say there were a few classes that were pretty giggly. I also want to emphasize that nobody should ever do this, as you have zero way to know how someone's going to react to cannabis. Most teachers were just classically high, all giggly, lazy, etc. But one teacher had to go to the hospital as she reacted badly to it and essentially had a panic attack and started screaming. I believe that she has a form of schizophrenia that she was medicating for, but the cannabis just triggered a bad reaction for her in her brain. The kid was then arrested for this, and I haven't seen him since high school. A couple of kids snuck into the auditorium to smoke cigarettes. They heard a teacher coming, and they threw a cigarette down and ran. A cigarette dropped onto a couch being used as a prompt for a school play. The auditorium caught fire. Full school evacuation, auditorium burned down to the nubs. Took months to clean up and rebuild. They were caught. I can only speak for my time there, but in my high school, a guy about a year ahead of me tripped out on bath salts while he was in computer tech class. He wasn't a big guy, but very strong for his size. And he flipped multiple tables over with computers on them, flailed on the ground like he was possessed, and was about to assault another student before help arrived. He probably would have bitten them. It took eight EMS sus police officers to hold him down. And even they were struggling. The craziest part of it all was back at school two days later, and I overheard him bragging about how many people it took to hold him down. Catholic school. One day, a priest who went to Africa as a missionary gave a lecture at the school. In the middle of the lecture, he asked about careers. Choose some students to answer, and they randomly choose me. What do you want to be in the future, young boy? An adult film star. Everyone in the auditorium burst out into laughter, and I got suspended. But it, it was worth it. From about a week ago until now, my school is under investigation for anti-black racism. A video was released that showed a teacher yelling and being discriminatory against some black students who were in the hall. She even said that she'd been accused of being racist before. Our school is on local news and students have created an equity and equality group to support each other. There have been several other incidents with some teachers and students, but the higher-ups aren't doing shit about it. My English teacher in the 11th grade was sleeping with a whole girls basketball team in exchange for straight A's. I actually failed English that year, but when that made the news, my school said I didn't have to go anymore because he wasn't doing the grading properly. Everybody who had his class got a B. One year on exams day, they were trying to add a new method to prevent cheating when a man from administration comes to every class before every exam and collects students' phones while sticking a sticker with a number on each phone and giving that same sticker to the student so he can get his phone after school without having anyone coming and taking his phone that looks alike it or something. This was working at first and a bit preventing cheating until one day some guy sneaked into our high school and came as the man who collects the phones while he wasn't and stole the whole high school's phones and went. Oh, lol. Kid made a chlorine bomb and threw it out in the trash can at lunch. Lockdown, bomb squad, every single kid and faculty member out in the field in 95 degree weather for two plus hours until the parents could show up to pick their kids up. This was a middle school, so yeah, he got expelled and arrested. Two years later in high school, he's back to school and built like a f***ing MMA fighter. Full beard and shaved head at 16. 
A kid in my class sent an email to the White House threatening to kill Socks, Clinton's cat. Secret Service showed up a few days later after they tracked down his computer. Did he get punishment? Lifetime ban for ever working for the government. He was in the military track too, but they ripped up his contract. First week of high school. PE class. The first section was swimming. Wasn't my class, but the class after. The kid came up with a game with his friends in the water. Who could hold their breath the longest? He was going up for air, but he hit his head in the pointy part of the gutter and never made it to the surface. Friends didn't notice, teacher didn't notice, eventually football players coming back to the locker rooms notice, he ended up passing. Teacher was fired, although I wouldn't fully blame him as he was attending and teaching kids who didn't know how to swim or weren't strong swimmers. One adult for 60 kids? That's the school's fault. I understand the teacher not noticing, but the friends who were directly competing with the kid didn't notice? Must have thought he was just really good at holding his breath. Thanks. When I was uh, in grade 9 in 2009, there was a whole school fight that lasted a whole break into the next session. There were even three teachers involved. The injury rate was ridiculous. There were over 15 broken noses, two broken ribs, and some stretched optical nerves. In 1999, four girls from my high school went on a six-week-long armed robbery spree. They knocked over four convenience stores and a bakery before the police caught them. This happened in a conservative middle-class suburb, and altogether the girls got away with less than $5,000, which might have been the most scandalous part. If they'd gone into subprime lending, I'm sure their parents would have been very proud of them. Three kids broke into school at night. They proceeded to spray paint one practice field, set fire to another, and burned a bunch of equipment. Thing is, one kid on had a very recognizable pair of shoes, and they were caught a couple of days later. I, I will never forget being in first year honor science class, and this kid we knew, he was a bit of an odd duck, but generally fun to be around and pretty chill. He was telling us all that as class was starting, he might not be around tomorrow. Nonchalantly, we ask, and he just says, I'll be in jail. He'd say some pretty off-the-wall stuff out of nowhere, and so a lot of us brushed it off. Next day, during class, a few police come out of nowhere, and they arrest the kid, and he goes off. But why was he arrested? Last I heard, nobody knows where the kid is, or if he had part in a murder beyond helping bury the body. Some say he was part of it, uh, but he always said it was under duress. He might be long gone under another name. Nobody knows. Strangest thing I ever witnessed personally, though. During high school in the late 80s, it was toward the end of the school year, and finals were just around the corner. School went on lockdown, and we weren't allowed to leave class. Everyone was quiet and calm, waiting around for a few hours. One of my friends was outside because the lockdown happened during his free period. He was going from class to class, updating everyone on what was going on. Turns out, a senior went into the principal's office with a shot-off shotgun and was holding him hostage. The cops were called. After a few hours, we were all sent home. No one was physically harmed in the end, and it turns out that the senior didn't get into the school of his choice, even though he has a great student. He was under extreme familial pressure to be the best, and must have cracked. I didn't know what happened to him after that, as it wasn't really spoken about much, at least not in my circles. It always sucks to hear stories like this. Yeah, people tend not to think of the damage that they're doing to their kids with such high expectations. I used to teach at an alternative high school, so a lot of my students were kids on probation. Kids from areas with a lot of gang violence. Many of them had issues related to the fact that they were both born drug addicted. That kind of thing. I had a student who I had worked hard to build a good rapport with. One Friday, he looked me in the eyes and told me, completely calmly, that I shouldn't come to work on Monday. He kept telling me that he didn't want me to be there on Monday. When I finally pressed him on why I shouldn't come to work on Monday, he told me that he was going to blow this sh up. I said, you know I need to report this, right? He told me to do what I had to do. He was arrested right out of my classroom and I had to be interviewed by the police. It was honestly really traumatic. I ended up calling out Monday, even though I knew nothing was going to happen because my anxiety went through the roof. I called out a lot after that and found a new job shortly after, but I still have a great deal of compassion for that student. I think about him often. I hope he's okay. Kids in my mom's class tried to poison another little girl while they were having a feud. They tampered with her snack and put things like sharp staples and hand sanitizer in it. They also put pencil lead in it thinking it would harm her. Obviously, ultimately harmless, but the intent was there. I'm glad one of the little boys involved came up to my mom and let her know what the plan was out of guilt. They're in the fourth grade, old enough to know better and to know what eating harmful things can do to a person. I used to teach PE to three to five year olds. I had this one kid who would come with his friend from kinder. His friend's mother apologized to me numerous times and said that she never would have offered to bring him if she knew what he was like. More than once, I had to evacuate the rest of the kids from the gym because this three-year-old would be running around with the gym screaming the F and C word at the top of his lungs while trying to punch and kick or headbutt other kids. He never knew what would set him off. If you asked him to kick a ball, it was like to kick another student or the ball. One time he got so violent that I couldn't get him away from other kids and ended up wrapping him up in the firm cuddle technique, which they definitely don't teach teachers about anymore. I basically dropped him to his knees with me on my knees behind him, arms wrapped around his arms and chest. The only part that he could move was his head, and he kept trying to smash the back of his head into my face. But the worst part was the laughter. He normally had a vague, empty look on his face, but when he was trying to hurt someone, 
He would scream with laughter, wearing the biggest eating grin. I only had him for 10 sessions once a week, but holy f I will never forget that kid. I had a three-year-old with the same thing. Would have to hold him while he was evil laughing and try to headbutt me. Eight hours a day. Five days a week for the entire school year. One of my students in high school came by one day and handed me a pop vinyl figurine from one of her favorite bands. She said I could have it, and I, not used to random gifts, asked her why she was giving it to me. She said something along the lines of she doesn't need it anymore, so I thanked her and I told her to have a good day. The following day, she killed herself. It immediately became clear to me why she didn't need the figurine anymore, and that still bothers me. Do you still have the figurine? Poor girl. I do. I'll keep it forever. I taught third graders for a year, so the kids were around nine years old. It was a couple of days before summer holidays, and I asked the kids what they were going to do during summer. I got to this one girl and asked her what she was going to do, and she happily announced she was going to Germany with her sister and her parents. I asked her what they were going to do in Germany, and she said that she was going to ask people if they had one euro. I was like, what? And she proceeded to sit down on the floor with a really sad look on her face, stuck out her hand to me like this, and said, see, like this. Please, miss, do you have just one euro? I'm hungry. She really didn't see anything wrong with this. I'm pretty sure she didn't really understand what she was doing. I was quite alarmed by this, so I informed the other school staff. It turned out that even though they weren't actually poor, her parents were regularly taking their two daughters to Germany over summer, where they would make them beg for money in the streets. I heard the girl and her sister got pulled out of school shortly after that, but I don't know what happened after that since I don't work there anymore. Back when I was a teacher, one of my students randomly started punching other kids, his friends, in the middle of class. No provocation whatsoever. The puncher was into bodybuilding and pretty in shape, and he never had been violent before in school, so this was both surprising and hard to break up considering his size. He broke his friend's nose and was smiling after, having no idea doing what he did was weird or upsetting. Recently, one of my students told a pregnant teacher that he wanted to punch her in the stomach. Another student said, you can't do that, she's pregnant. And the first student said, that's the point. These were fifth graders. This is also in a school that rarely has behavior problems, so this was quite a shock. Something similar happened to me when I was pregnant with my first. A student told me that it was going to make me lose the baby. It's the only time I've ever really flipped out on my students in seven years of teaching. That student had some serious issues, though, and by the end of the school year, I was the only teacher that he would talk to about the shit that went on in his life. Bouncing from foster home to foster home, abuse, etc. He left a letter on my desk at the end of the year saying that my unborn child was incredibly lucky to have me as a mom. I ugly cried at my desk when I read it. I teach four-year-olds part-time, which means that I usually do art and recreation in the afternoons. There's this girl in my class, let's call her Mary, who is a tiny terror that frequently runs around making the other kids cry. Her moves are very calculated. A hair pull, kicking a toy over, snatching art. She waits until the other kid is crying before she relents. She never wants the toy, just the reaction. On the other hand, this boy Jim is her polar opposite, often the voice of reason in my class. He's a gentle giant, the biggest kid in preschool. He shares happily, he's kind during playtime, and probably the most thoughtful human that I've ever met. Well, one day during outside time, Mary kept targeting Jim. He was really good-natured the entire time. She would, like, snatch a shovel from him, and he would respond kindly by saying, It's okay, you can have it. Toys are for sharing. Stuff like that. Remember those giant red and yellow cars that kids sit in and pedal with their feet? The yard has five for the kids to share. Mary was leaning up against the wall, and Jim was pushing one of those cars. The kids liked running around with them, so that was normal. Jim was probably a good 30 feet away from her when he suddenly started accelerating. He aimed like a homing missile, pointing straight at poor, clueless Mary. I genuinely believed he would turn away at the last minute or something. I was wrong. He slammed the car straight into Mary, effectively crushing her against the wall. I will never forget how long it took her to inhale. I, I was shaking. I thought he cracked her ribs. Her entire back was bruised, but thankfully no further damage. I was too shocked to be angry. After passing Mary to my co-teacher, I turned to Jim, who was sulking in the corner, and asked, Why'd you do that? He just shrugged and very calmly said, I was just trying to take care of our problem. 100% scared of this kid now. I was a preschool teacher at the time. I was doing group time, singing songs, reading a book, and all the kids were sitting on the floor. One left to blow her nose. She came back, walked through the crowd of kids to get back to her spot, grabbed a quiet girl's hair, and kept walking. My assistant thought it was a mistake, but the girl kept walking. She even bent at the knees and yanked while the poor, long-haired girl screamed. The girl had no remorse, and she would be so unpredictable. She would look into your eyes, but right through them. It, it, it was a stressful year. At the first school that I taught at, I had a girl come up to me one day and say, Robert has a knife. I pulled Robert into the hallway to talk to him about it. He said that he didn't have a knife, but he did have a box cutter. I asked him why he had it, and he said, because I'm tired of Chris. Chris was an annoying suck-up, but he wasn't really mean or bad to the other kids. I asked Robert on what he was planning to do to Chris. He said, I'm going to get him in the bathroom. 
I usually took the class to the restroom after lunch, but I didn't that day because they were being rowdy in the hallway. I took Robert to the office, and after hearing the story, the principal chewed him out. She then called Robert's mom, and she chewed him out on the phone. Here's the kicker. Robert knew that he was in serious trouble. He knew that what he was planning was wrong. He just didn't care. Not in a false bravado macho type. He, he literally didn't care. I hate to predict a kid's future criminal endeavors, but that kid scares me. By the way, Robert was eight years old at the time. Middle school English teacher. I had a student pull a tooth out of his own head to get out a silent reading. It was a baby tooth, thank God. But according to his mom, it was not loose. He sat at his desk and he grabbed it and he yanked it back and forth and popped it out and came up to the desk bleeding all over himself and said that he wasn't able to read anymore. So could he just go put his head down? He was sent to the nurse and his mom was, well, horrified. I had a fifth grader who I swore was sociopathic. His father had deported the boy's mother because he wanted a new wife. If that gives some context to the living situation. The boy would say very aggressive things. Moon students on the bus, etc. But the predatory behavior was the worst. He'd wait as students left the room so that he could be next to last, turn off the light, and backhand the last kid in line. Often his own cousin, who was the most common victim, had to keep an eye on him constantly. He'd also steal electronics and things from his friends, or force his cousin to do so in case they were caught. P.S. Yes, the CPS was involved. This was almost a decade ago, and I'm, I'm really not sure what happened to him. I had a girl who couldn't be in the classroom and had to be on a one-on-one -on -one with me at all times, but... She couldn't be in the classroom because she was extremely violent and deliberately stabbed another child in the eye with a colored pencil and laughed. The other child had to be hospitalized. When we asked her why she did it, she started laughing again and said because I wanted to. She would also randomly attack kids in the playground and in the halls. When they put her in a one-on-one -on -one with me and she couldn't do that anymore, she started attacking me on a daily basis. She was four. A kid tried to hold the classroom hostage by pulling a box cutter. They immediately started making crazy demands. Before security could even arrive, a big kid pushed him down, grabbed the box cutter out of his hands, and said, quit being an asshole. Then sat right back down for the lesson to continue. He's a lazy-ass graphic designer for a video game company. He plays Magic the Gathering way too much, and wasted most of his potential playing video games. He also moved back with his mother at 30 years old after a nine-year relationship with an abusive ex. And finally, he's cursed with ADHD. This person is me. Disappeared off the face of the earth immediately. Highest grades in every single class, literally perfect attendance for years, and their name is literally in every single award ceremony. They gave off feminine vibes. My best guess is that they were a closeted trans girl who had extremely high motivation to move out, or something, I don't know. Didn't really talk to them. Didn't really know anyone who knew them that well. Haven't seen them since that last day, and I don't think they went to prom. The smartest kid. Went to an esteemed aerospace university, but had to move back home due to medical issues. No idea what happened to him there. The valedictorian, smartest on paper, works as an OBGYN in upstate New York. The most successful. A uh, musical TikTok star with 12 million followers. Went to West Point. Knocked up his girlfriend his junior year, so automatically disqualified from attending. You couldn't have dependents and attend a military academy at the same time. Not sure if that's still true, though. Married the girl, got divorced a couple of years later. Enlisted in the army to fulfill his service obligation. Finally became an officer in his early 30s and is now flying Blackhawks. Got remarried and has two kids with his new wife. Seems genuinely happy. The smartest guy in my high school also went to West Point and became an army ranger. Sadly, he passed away a few years ago after getting a brain tumor related to the toxic burn pits. I actually did. I was never super close to them, but always saw potential, so thought maybe I could bring him into a business one day. Followed him on social media and kept in contact with him. I've always been the entrepreneur slash marketing type, and this guy was just a genius. Through high school and college, we had classes together, and he's true to this day, the, the, the smartest guy that I've ever known. Like, savant smart. But still has good social skills and was a cool dude. In our advanced calculus and chem classes, when I was struggling to even pass, he'd be getting 100% on the tests, or 115% after the teacher's curve, so the rest of us mortals could have squeezed by him with a 70. He also never had to study. He was just naturally understanding all of the material. It was really impressive. He ended up studying physics at Berkeley, and of course graduated top of his class. He now works as an insurance adjuster for Geico or Progressive or something like that, making 70k. I don't know if he just doesn't know how to utilize his knowledge or what, but one of these days, if I can come up with the right idea to utilize him, he's the first one I'm recruiting. Kills me to see such a smart guy wasting away at a desk job. Knew a guy who was really smart, but was also kind of a shitbag. He got caught a couple of years back producing a ton of fentanyl at his aunt and grandma's house, I think. I was friends with the guy who had the second highest GPA in our class. 
He created a business renting out and managing office equipment. I lost touch with him, but I just Googled his business. It's it's still open, and he's still the owner after 15 to 20 years. Glassdoor says it's worth 5 to 25 million U.S. dollars. Four years after high school graduation, he was driving back to Yale from spring break, weeks from graduating with highest honors, and then starting a Rhodes Scholarship when his car was hit head-on by a truck. He was killed instantly. We all believe that he'd be the first African-American president of the United States. Dude, that's that's a really tragic end to such a bright student. No idea. I got voted for most likely to go to prison. Here I am at 33 and still haven't been pulled over by a cop. One of the people who voted for me ended up murdering his wife by saying his gun went off. And that dude was a gunsmith. She wanted to leave town and become a surgeon. Ended up pregnant, working as a special ed teacher, joined a popular Christian cult, and is still living in the slums with her cheating, pee bald boyfriend. She's a Karen and plays a, a local amateur women's soccer team. I still can't believe I used to be in love with her. I graduated with 20 other kids many years ago. We had a guy in our high school that was a genius. Four of us entered a quiz bowl as a joke, and we beat the teachers. We then went on to regionals and did very well against college students. It was this one kid while us other three just watched. He was bored with school and quit. He later got his GED. He lives in a small town and has worked in the same manufacturing plant like everyone else in the area. Everyone in town knows how smart he is, but he's just like everyone else. It's very weird, and I don't know how to feel about it. You said smartest. The smartest kid in my school slept through classes. Was intrigued with him, slept through class, got a 98 to 100% on every test. After high school, he was stabbed to death in a drug deal gone bad in Miami. She was home for Thanksgiving in her freshman year of university. Her parents had just built a new house in the country, and she was out there riding her bike in the afternoon. Was hit from behind, the driver took off, and she was paralyzed from the neck down. Quadriplegic since then. Had to drop out of university. Requires around-the-clock care. Can't communicate what's going on in their brilliant, brilliant brain. Very tragic. He had a nervous breakdown in our senior year. He was apparently found out in the woods near his house beating a tree with the metal baseball bat saying, I don't want to play anymore. By the time that he was found, he had been doing this so long that his hands were bleeding. He still got many college scholarship offers, but dropped out after his first year. He works at a local secondhand bookstore and is on multiple medications now, from what I understand. Well, one kid I knew in the 90s who everyone thought was special wrote some security program that the CIA couldn't break, so the government hired him. Another I knew became Obama's speechwriter. One of my closest, smartest friends became a history teacher, though. He got into drugs in the first semester of college and dropped out. Then kind of just floated through life from a low-paying manual labor job to another low-paying manual labor job for 15 or so years. He then got control of his opioid addiction and worked his way up from labor to site management in the solar industry. And it's doing pretty well now. Source, it was me. She was a typical good Christian girl. As soon as college hit, she took up smoking and dropped out of the major we were in. Don't know if she finished up a degree. Ended up knocked up and now has four kids, I think. Got some tats, isn't married. She's pretty cute, but the smoking and alcohol did a number on her skin. I don't know about smartest, but our class president voted most likely to succeed, shot and killed his fiancé's kid, and then offed himself, like 20 years after high school. He somehow tried to slaughter his fiancé as well. I forget the specifics. Obviously, this is quite a shock and a scandal, and apparently he's been suffering from BPD. He was actually quite overweight. When he left for college, he was studying physics, and a couple of years later, I learned that he had lost 175 pounds, became super into fitness, dropped out of college, and became a gym trainer. From physics to physiques. Learn how to lift with the proper angles. I graduated in a class of 18 people. I was co-valedictorian, thanks to social media and my mother sending me to the local paper for years. I can tell you what happened to all of them. Two are dead, three are in jail, including my co-valedictorian, three work in healthcare, RNs and radiologists, etc. One is a FEMA inspector, she's in Kissimmee right now. Two work for the Cherokee Nation, one is a roofer, one has been fired as a jail guard, violence towards inmates, and kicked out of a church as a pastor for embezzlement. One is a high school basketball coach, one is an openly gay cop in Austin, which I find fascinating considering where we came from. Two are meth heads who dropped off the map. And I got college scholarships and left my shitty town for an English degree and the promise of the great American novel. Instead, I became a college advisor, married a college professor, and had a great kid later in life. And then semi-retired last year to be that single cook at my son's small private school. Today, I made sour cream chicken enchiladas with a roasted tomatillo sauce from scratch. Truly living my best life. Hashtag class of 88. After graduation from our high school, we'd, he did four years of university. I went to his wedding right after university graduation. She was probably the smartest 
first girl in our high school. Got a job with Lockheed Martin real quick, and nobody's seen them since. I could see them in a top-secret government lab inventing anti-gravity flight. Whenever I hear uh, about a UFO sighting, I say, Oh, no, that's just Bill. Found a private equity fund specializing in identifying and shorting companies who were cooking their books and defrauding customers. This is such a great idea for so many reasons. Made millions, retired early, and now executive produces movies. How on earth would he even be able to identify that without insider knowledge? I guess that's why he was the smartest. I'm still in touch with him. Great guy, and truly the most astonishingly competent person I've ever met. It was apparent since elementary school that he'd be a massive success. Anyways, he went to Harvard, then helped progressively increasing responsibility as a tech engineer. Eventually became a CTO slash founder, and his most recent startup was acquired by a major tech brand that everyone's heard of. Kevin Porter was the smartest kid. His father was an actual rocket scientist at JPL, and he was ripping through calculus in ninth grade and got only A's on everything. I think he was a failure in a social outcast in university because he was just such a maladjusted person. Person. Even other geeks didn't like him. He was the ultimate mother's boy and got protected from degenerate punks like me who smoked weed and ditched school. So, a funny story, there was this kid in high school that I'm ashamed had been I bullied. I reached out to him in adulthood and apologized to him, and he received it really well. I'm thankful he accepted my apology. I used to tease him. He had greasy hair and braces and wore these ridiculous colored windbreaker pants, like purple and yellow and orange, and I teased him about his sexuality. Anyhow, one day a teacher caught me picking on him and said, you know, he's going to be working for NASA one day while well, you're going to struggle to graduate. Oof. He didn't go to NASA, but he got multiple degrees, including a master's in molecular biology from multiple renowned schools, and yeah, he's doing great. I did graduate, by the way, though. I was 25 or so and met up with some old classmates one night. We met for food, and they say, Class smart kid is coming too. He shows up in an old trench coat, fedora tipped down, and with a girl who looks like she's 16. The girl's upset with him because he's distant, talking down to her, etc. They step out to argue, and I ask friends why they're dating if she's clearly not even out of high school. Friends say that she looks young, but she was 18. He comes back in and invites us all to his house. I decline. She seems weird. I go home. A week later, I hear that everyone at this house that night woke up to an FBI raid at 3 a.m. with guns in their faces because the valedictorian had metric sh tons of graphic child images on his computer. The girl he was dating was 14, and he'd been assaulting her since she was 10. He went to prison, got out after 10, and was sent back for reoffending. Graduated in 2004. In 2011, she ended up scamming thousands of dollars from students at a local community college. She pretended to be a teacher and had her students pay cash up front and then told them to meet her at a local coffee shop. He got a perfect score on his ACT, one of like 15 people in the country to do it. Basically, he had his choice of schools and then got handpicked by SpaceX to be a launch engineer just after graduation. Was a really great person when we were in school together. These two dudes hacked into the school server or whatever the hell you want to phrase it like, but got everyone's SNN and whatnot. Ended up with all of their college exceptions revoked. Last I saw, one of them worked at Papa John's. The other went to community college and then went to a university and got busted for something involving LSD in the chemistry lab. My best friend Bob was the smartest kid in our school. Like, genius level intelligence. Eidetic memory, kind of smart. But he's lazy as fuck. Didn't go to college, didn't get a job, and at 25, he moved to Philly to live with his sister. At 26, he joined the Air Force, and I haven't heard anything from him for 10 years. His family says he's living in Philly, but I can't get a hold of him, and he's made no effort to contact me. 20 years of friendship gone. My mom has had some stories about what she confiscated from the lower elementary age students. The usual prank items like whoopee cushions, sure. But one time a student was playing with this weird box. The box was locked. So she couldn't put it in the confiscated bin. She put it on top of a cabinet. About an hour later it starts ringing. Furiously. It took some doing to get that box open. Turns out the kid's father was a professional chef. So the kid had grabbed every timer in the house, set them for the max amount of time, locked the box, brought it to school, and played with it so it would get confiscated and ring loudly. Whole class erupted with laughter and screaming. A true agent of chaos. This sounds like a professional level of f***ery. Most dangerous? A knife from an 8th grader. Most annoying? Different school than above, but a Wi-Fi jammer and a USB killing device from an 8th grader. Preschool teacher here. I had to convince a 4-year-old that his mom's wedding ring should go into a special box on the front of the desk instead of a finger on a 6-year-old girl that he had a crush on. Later, he brought in his dad's car keys and a bottle opener. I think I've heard things like this before. The kid actually gave the ring to the girl, who kept it, and then when the boy's mother found out, she asked the other parents to return it, and they refused, saying it was a gift. My wife is a teacher, and one of her first graders brought her two hard seltzers because her mom said that they're good after a long day and she deserved them. 
Oh, that's pretty sweet, actually, even if inappropriate. My friend taught at a prestigious all-boy high school. She was grocery shopping and buying a couple of cases of wine to restock her wine rack. Of course, she runs into a student of, and his mother. And the kid says, Hi, miss. Wow, that's a lot of alcohol. His mom looks at him and says, You're probably the reason she has to drink like that. The teacher replies, No, it's all of them. For Christmas that year, that same kid gave her a $200 gift card to a wine store. I had to confiscate hand sanitizer from a student who decided to drink it to get drunk and threw up everywhere. The weirdest one was definitely the fish in a vase they found during locker checks. It was in an unassigned locker that somebody had added a lock to. Inside was a live beta fish in about as large of a vase as you could fit into a locker, fully decorated. Someone had clipped a little book light to the top of the vase, so presumably the fish wasn't in the dark all the time. No one claimed to know whose it was or how long it had been there, so I lived in the coach's office for at least that year. Not a teacher, but a bus driver. I had to confiscate a fifth grader's cell phone a few days ago, specifically because he was showing a hardcore adult videos to first graders with it. A lot of phone calls that day. A dead squirrel. I taught preschool at the time. I once did that too. My primary school girlfriend got kissed by a dude from her class and I was super mad because he was stronger than me and I couldn't just get back at him with the same thing. The next day, I hear animals fighting on my way to school and a moment later, a squirrel falls dead from a tree. I have no idea what killed it, but it didn't look wounded, so I threw out my lunch and put it in the now empty bag. The kid who kissed my girlfriend was and still is a notorious liar, so when they found it in his bag, nobody believed it wasn't him and he couldn't say anything to prove it wasn't. He wasn't even able to say that it wasn't his bag where the squirrel was in because he was known for stealing other kids' lunches. I guess it was my perfect crime. T-shaped glass pipe with weeks still in the balls slash bowl. Mom asked if she'd be getting it back or if the school was keeping it. When I was in the fifth grade, there was an active market in live bees. Some kids figured out that the weight of the average fifth grader briefly stepping on a bee in the grass would stun it for about a minute without actually killing it. So they started going out in teams to scout bees in the field, stun them, and carefully scoop them into a plastic sandwich bag, and then sell them to other students who'd release them into classrooms to waste, well, time and scare people. You could get honeybees for 25 cents apiece. Bumblebees and yellow jackets cost more. Teacher and school admins started cracking down on this, and teachers literally confiscated live bees in plastic bags from students when found. And they eventually had to start having someone watch the field to catch students in the act. In the third grade, I once had my entire deck of only holographic Yu-Gi-Oh cards confiscated for me from playing with them during break time too much with friends. I was told I'd be able to get them back when I graduated school, in the sixth grade. I said, okay, not totally understanding what was going on. I forgot about them completely, though I still kept a vested interest in the TCG for a few more years, like into the fifth grade, until ninth grade. I went back and asked where my third grade teacher to return my property. Within seconds, she pulls him out of her desk and hands him to me. It was a weird experience. My mom always told the story about my brother bringing a signed picture of Richard Petty to his class and telling everyone he was his dad. One to second grade, maybe. But that everyone forgot because the next kid pulled out an antique gun. My innocent sister was sent to the principal's office for bringing a dildo to school and making an obscene joke slash gesture with it to her teacher. What actually happened was she was drinking these weird protein shots to bulk up for cheerleading or something. We'd gotten from Costco, which came in long, pink, fairly phallic tubes. When a teacher got mad and was like, What is this? My sister said, It's protein shot, and gestured to drink it. Someone in my class had their phone taken because their Siri went off and said, What do you need from me? A note said, So do you want to give the d or what? I teach 12-year-olds. I taught first grade and confiscated a piece of broken beer bottle from a six-year-old. It really surprised me because he was the sweetest kid. Turns out another classmate asked him to bring a weapon and hide it in the playground sand so that he could get back at another kid. I tried to do more life lesson things and suspension for both boys because they're frickin' six, but school policy had them both suspended for a few days. Not a teacher, but I watched a pretty funny confiscation while in detention as a sophomore in high school. I was just reading a book, trying to make the time go by, when our vice principal, who was monitoring detention that day, tipped out for a moment. All of a sudden, I hear a cracking sound, and I look up from my book to see a broken egg on the floor. The few kids in the room looking around at each other confused, and nobody owns up to it, and nobody knows who did it, because we were all distracted when it happened. The vice principal returns, doesn't notice the egg, but he's so engrossed with his paperwork that the kid still gets away with throwing another egg. Everyone looks up. The vice principal asks what that noise was, and this kid holds up a broken pencil and apologizes. Everyone goes back to minding their business, but all the students now know who the culprit is. Finally, this kid throws one last egg. 
but unfortunately the VP looked up from the papers right as he threw it. Walked over to the kid's desk, asked him what he thought he was doing, and the kid went, just cracking jokes. VP holds out his hand and the kid reveals an entire carton of eggs from under his sweatshirt and hands it to him. The VP looks so unfazed that I honestly wondered what else that man had seen. I was honestly glad I got detention that day. Not a teacher, but I am half deaf and my music teacher took my hearing aid and, and refused to accept that it wasn't an earbud. Then he yelled at me for the rest of class for not playing in tune. Couldn't exactly tell how well I was playing since I couldn't hear it. Not a teacher, but this is the worst thing I had confiscated. It was 1984, and I was nine years old. Back then, it was common for parents to buy loads of fireworks for November 5th in Britain, Guy Fox Night. I got a load of them around November 1st and emptied them into a cardboard toilet roll that I'd sealed up at one end, made a fuse from blue touch paper, and stuck it in, then used masking tape to seal this top. I was nine. I took it to school and was showing a kid in class during a lesson. The teacher, a guy in his 60s, saw I was distracting people, so he called me up and asked what it was. I explained it, and he confiscated it. At the end of the day, he called me over, told me not to bring things like that to school, and then gave it back to me. And that was the end of the matter. Until I set it off in a few days later, and it set fire to a hedge. Kids, the 80s really were a different time. So right out of uni, about 25-ish, I took a job teaching at a school at the capital of our country. Lots of poverty, and the level of education was low for these teenagers. First day on the job, kid takes out a hacking knife and starts attacking the furniture with it. For some weird reason, I just walked up to him, demanded he give it to me, which worked, but it just as easily could have not worked. During the same job, I also had multiple conversations with students about how misconduct towards the teacher and me isn't okay. I also got locked into a classroom with 10 angry male students, including the one from the knife incident. In the end, I left because the administration didn't back me up. That is rotten. Teenage dudes are probably the worst to teach for female teachers. I've had so many classmates who act juvenile as F when they get a female teacher. This year, it was a common joke in my class to say yes sir when answering roll call to my female teacher because she was mildly strict. She's also quite authoritative, so she gets called a lot behind her back. Luckily, she handled it well. Also sucks because she was a, an amazing teacher who put a lot of effort into her class. Napalm. Some kids were into petrol or gas sniffing, but found it hard to transport and keep hidden, so they learned how to make napalm so that they could carry it hidden inside their bags. I had to lock down the whole school and get hazmat in to dispose of it. And how did they find out how to make it? They asked one of the science teachers, and he told them. A crossbow, property of a 17-year-old student, and the boarding school where I used to work. The same boy was also fond of bringing pheasants to school that he'd killed on his father's estate, plucking them in the shower block. Not mine, but my fiancé's co-worker confiscated a makeshift shank from a third grader. It's about eight years old. Made from a popsicle stick and a straw. He said that he was going to use it on his animals at home. And the best part was when they told the dad, he said, Why'd you give him the supplies to make a shank? I assume that he's going to commit a few crimes in the future. Worst thing... Bullets from a first grader had to do a room clear to look for a gun. Best thing, a cat a high school student brought in their backpack. Hmm. So far, a death letter that a severely antisocial student wrote after a minor incident with a peer. The letter told the student to off themselves to die already and depicted bloody wrists. I truly think the student didn't intend to give the other student the letter because they never talked to anyone, but that was some f***ed up sh to see from a kid. My mom has been a primary teacher for her entire life now, in the United Kingdom, and the worst incident that she had to deal with was a girl aged 10 who was having issues with a boy essentially bullying her. She told her dad, and her dad's solution was to give her a sawn-off shotgun to intimidate the boy. No one knew it was unloaded, but the hell it raised when a 10-year-old schoolgirl brings out a shotgun certainly put the boy off from ever coming near her again. I'm sorry, but the image of a little 10-year-old holding what's probably a 12-gauge sawn-off shotgun is hilarious to me. Probably a quarter size of her, and it, probably a quarter the size of her, and it would send her a half a kilometer in the other direction if she tried to use it. Thank God it was unloaded, though. That would have been a very, very traumatizing day for everyone involved. My dad told me he once had to restrain a student and confiscate a pencil sharpener, one of the cheap plastic ones, which they had, he'd done a decent job of sharpening his pinky with. My dad has a master's in English and special education. He works with special needs at risk kids, and he has to take knives and all sorts of stuff from kids. And I just want to give him credit because he deserves it. It's a hard, thankless job, and no one wants to do it. Substitute teacher here. I was randomly assigned for the very last period of a day to a difficult class. All of these kids were enormous, like maybe they were football kids. All I know is that my petite self wasn't even shoulder level with these kids. 
So, in a classroom full of enormous dudes, a few in the back kept picking on one kid in the front. The seriously huge kids stood up and charged at the super big kids in the back, who all stood up ready to fight. My super lame reaction was to slam my tiny, teeny hands onto the desk and yell, Excuse me! Back in your seats, please! They all sort of just stopped and looked confused, and then sat back down. No fight, no problem. Nobody was more surprised than me. I ended up leaving them some good notes for their teacher, because honestly, any enormous guys who stopped their big-ass fight just for some tiny lady in a cardigan asking them to sit down, well, they, they can't be all bad. I used to teach high school in rural Georgia. I had to break up a fight between two girls and a heavily pregnant girl. I never taught these girls, and it happened between classes in the hallway in front of my room. The pregnant girl was on the floor screaming and crying while one girl was kicking her in the head, and one was kicking her in the stomach. I grabbed each of them by their upper arms and hauled them away very hard. The one on her ass started crying about how I'd hurt her. The other girl acted like she was going to rush me or the pregnant girl. I grabbed her, held her back, and told her that if she tried it again, I'd make her wish she hadn't. She tried to hit me, but I, I twisted her arm until she was on the floor kneeling and screaming. Meanwhile, one of the other teachers helped the pregnant girl and another called the nurse slash principal. I was the only one to act for a good 30 to 40 seconds. Jeez, tell me the unborn baby was okay. Do you know why they even fought? That's just it's so messed up. The baby was okay, and so was the mother. I've only broken up a few fights, and they were pretty mundane, but if there's one thing I know is that girls' fights are worse than boys. Girls will go for your eyes, but boys typically stick to an honor code. No hits below the belt and all that. To add to that, most guys I've seen fight tend to walk away from it with respect for each other. Girls tend to drag that grudge to the grave. Actual teacher here. It was after school and I was headed to the copy room. On the way is the cafeteria, which had been cleared of all the tables and was basically just one big old empty area, except for the huge mass of students that had developed. I rushed into the massive crowd where two different circles had formed. It was literally like being at a metal concert with two mosh pits. At least 16 kids were fighting. When I broke through, one kid fell in front of me and the guy who pushed him ran up and did a Janikowski kick to his head. All metal moshing instincts kicked in and my main goal was to basically push away as many people as possible and keep them away from each other until more AP slash officers could arrive for help. It was chaos. So I don't remember much after that. To this day, I don't know why they were fighting. Once everything was settled, I picked my paper back up and I went back to making copies. When I was teaching high school in Baltimore, I was walking down the hall during my plan time and I heard the sounds of fighting in the classroom. So I poked my head in and I saw Sam, this big, sweet kid who I taught, with another kid pinned to the floor, flat laying on top of him hands pinned, etc. Sam is so big that this other kid is completely immobilized. Sam isn't doing anything to him. I think I can talk Sam into letting the kid go. I didn't know the other kid. So I bend down next to him and talk to him for a minute. I finally convince him to sit up. As soon as he starts to push back, the other kid gets his arm free and swipes at Sam with a knife. None of us knew he was folding, except for Sam. Sam has special needs, so I'm not sure if he just didn't think to tell us about the knife or if he was trying not to snitch. He narrowly missed my face slash my neck, and Sam had him pinned back to the ground before any further attempts could be made. We let him stay that way until the police arrived. I don't get involved in fights anymore. I was in class one day, and my teacher was a nice 50-something-year-old, sensitive, kind man. These two freshmen, one small and thin, but still a fighter, and a really chubby guy were roasting each other until the little guy got all pissed and they went at it. They were throwing each other at the board and throwing punches, and the whole class was in shock. My poor teacher had to step in, but they didn't want to stop, and he was getting hit too. Finally, some girl said, help him. After 45 seconds of all of us staring in awe, and they broke it up. My teacher said that he was real sore the next day. When I was student teaching, I had these two kids who were always getting in each other's faces. One day, they looked like they were actually gonna start throwing punches. The kid named Ben, one of my absolute favorite students, he was hilarious, looked at them and then at me. He must have seen the panic on my face. These boys were at least a foot taller than my five foot height, and my mentor teacher was never around. So he quickly stepped between them and said, Ladies, ladies, calm down. You're both pretty. Everyone burst out laughing. It broke the tension and they both backed down. Ben was a great kid. I work in an alternative high school 611 program. Just a couple of weeks ago, I broke up a fight in a gym. And once the students were separated, one of them punched a para in the jaw and buckled his knees. I've had a kid sucker punch another student he didn't like. Well, he didn't like the way he was talking to a girl. Anyways, he broke his jaw. Had a boy that bit down on a girl's hand because of an argument in art and she couldn't get him to let go and he, she was clawing at his eyes. Got in between two students in the cafeteria who had started to fight and one of them hit me with a full strawberry parfait. Later, once the parfait dried, my shirt was crusted into a crumpled wad near my shoulder where I'd been grabbed. Those were all from this year. 
Been there for 12. Love that place. I was working as a substitute teacher at the middle school. A small class walks in with about 20 kids. 10 girls, 10 boys. The boys and the girls sit on separate sides of the room, except for one boy who sits by himself. I have a worksheet for them to do, and I hand it out. The boy sitting by himself is a little chubby kid that finishes his worksheet extremely quick. I have nothing else for him to do, so I let him play the board games in the classroom by himself. The other boys are working on their worksheets when I notice that there is one boy who looks like a little gang member. He starts hassling the chubby kid and causing trouble along with his little friends. I tell him to calm down and start talking to him and reprimanding him. While that's happening, his friends go behind my back and they start harassing the little chubby kid. The little chubby kid snaps and goes into a blind rage where he pushes a random kid that wasn't even interacting with him. The kid reacts by punching the chubby kid in the face, and the random kid had a bunch of rings in his hands, which cut up the chubby kid's face pretty bad. The chubby kid cries and I have to call the administration and wait for help. The whole time the chubby kid keeps saying that every single day they're always bullying him and that it was his brother's birthday today and he just wanted to have a good day. It was so sad sad, but from what I could tell, all three were going to get expelled because of zero tolerance. That's what the principal told me, at least I was writing my report. I pointed out how I thought the chubby kid was a good kid, and the real issue was the wannabe gang member, but nobody cared. In a quiet computing class, when suddenly two 15-year-olds stood up and decided to have a stare-down contest while grabbing each other by the throat, both boys seemed to be locked in, blind, I'm going to squeeze a life out of you rage, and I had to physically pull them away from each other. After this, both instantly calmed down, and nothing further ever came from it. So, worst not in violence, but in a what-just-happened kind of way. I was a student in American Civics my senior year, and for the majority of it, a student teacher taught it. Awesome guy who was really passionate about politics, but kept his own personal political views private. He was great at his job, and I learned a lot from him. He encouraged us to care about our government without making anyone feel like they were wrong for their opinions. One day, two kids were f***ing around, one pissed the other off, and fist started flying. Our student teacher tried to break them up and yelled at one student's name in a big booming voice that scared the shit out of all of us, so we all froze, including the two fighting. Here was this great student teacher who was always having a great attitude suddenly using his big scary voice. And holy f*** did it work. Even the hot kids who acted like they were tough sat straight up and they just stared wide-eyed. We walked them both down and when they didn't need him anymore, he came back and went, oh, that was the first for me, with his usual chipper attitude. And that was the day I learned not to f*** with the student teacher. Having a good command voice helps a lot. The way are the nice ones. It's the sudden shift in personality that does it, I'm sure. Whenever my dad loses his patience with any of the foster kids that live here, and some of them are stupid enough to make that happen, I decide that right now is the best time to stay in my room. He's not a violent man, but holy f is it scary when nice dad suddenly becomes angry dad. He accidentally hurt one of the kids once, but that wasn't even an anger. A 16-year-old kid just rushes into the dining hall and shouts, He's gonna kill my dad! Dad grabs the kid's wrists, and it's not broken, but he did get it bandaged. Sprained, I think? He didn't last long here after that. Picked up by police some weeks or so later. Totally not a teacher, unfortunately. I grew up in an area in Australia with a strong Sikh Indian community. They're the reason the town was flourishing, and still is today. But being that they were a minority, they were picked on at school and they were bullied. Anyways, one of the Indians wasn't taking any shit and he got into a fight. The fight was going like every other fight does until the one Indian kid slipped his silver bracelet over his knuckles and punched the other kid in the mouth. It was horrific. The guy who got punched went into shock as he realized his face is now mangled. He was missing four teeth and his nose was broken. The first school I worked at was a behavioral program for students who were transitioning from prison and rehab back to mainstream schools. The worst? Well, a kid made a shiv out of a pencil and a compass and attacked the biggest gangbanger at school at lunch for no reason. Gangbanger was carrying, we found that out later from P.O., but didn't attack back because, to quote him directly, a kid is f***ing crazy. Being in the middle of that standoff alone while the rest of my staff worked to separate everyone else was the scariest moment of my career. Funniest? All-out brawl between, like, five girls, hair pulling, biting, bloody everything, over whether or not Justin Bieber was hot. Apparently, he wasn't. I used to supervise the after-school program run by my local YMCA. There were two girls, one in fourth grade and the other in second, who would not stop physically fighting or leave one another alone for even a moment. It culminated in the second grader wrapping a sweatshirt around the older girl's neck and choking her with it. The fourth grader responded by kicking the second grader as hard as she could between her legs. Now I've witnessed pain, outbursts, and tantrums like you wouldn't believe. But this second grader screamed out louder than I thought was possible. She tossed stuff off of every table in the room, and children actually fled the cafeteria to join the kindergarten group back in the gym. Thankfully, I don't work there anymore, and someday I say to myself, today was tough, 
but at least a fourth grade girl didn't kick me in the crotch as hard as she could. My mom was an admin slash family therapist at my high school. Two football players started brawling, and when one got the upper hand, my mom pulled him by the backpack and tossed him away. While she was helping the other guy up, the guy she tossed punched her in the back, and she fell. Before the guy that pushed her could lay another hand on her, she jumps back up and gives him a wrist lock that gets him to drop to his knees. Whenever people ask how it felt that neither my brother nor I were quick enough to react, she just says, I've been breaking up fights between those big heads and their dad for 16 years. I don't need their skinny butts. He was a beast. 